song. What an incredible declaration from our hearts that, that we are redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. He saved us, transformed us, set us free, set us up as ambassadors for him to go and share the good news, to tell about who he is. Someone who was once an enemy of the cross has now become the declarer of that great news. And this morning, uh, we have incredible, uh, some incredible guests with us, incredible opportunities. Our church partners with uh, Grace and Truth Ministries. It was located in Holtville, California. It's led by uh, Pastor Richard Moore. His uh, sweet wife, Miss Tammy, is here this morning, who is actually better than Richard. We're glad you're here, but more than him anyways. Um, uh, they, uh, they actually uh, brought a team of uh, Spanish-speaking, Hispanic folks here to uh, our area. Been working in Loudoun County and Lower City and Loudoun areas, uh, uh, doing evangelism, um, VBS, working with churches, and uh, uh, been having a great time this weekend. So our, our church has been playing host, uh, much like when we go out, they play host to us. And so it's been an incredible time with you guys, uh, uh, worshiping with you, praying with you, studying the Word together, going uh, going out into the communities. And uh, this morning we have some folks who are coming to uh, to share with us about what God has done in their lives and how he's working in theirs. And so uh, some of it's going to be translated, and uh, uh, Paul is going to actually speak in uh, English. And so uh, so we're looking forward to it. So I'm going to ask you guys to give them a warm welcome uh, as they come forward. <laughs> Paul, guys, come on. Come on. Bienvenidos en el nombre de Jesús, o Jesús, el Señor. Paul, are you going to translate for them? Sorry, let me get out of the way. I'm right in the middle of one big happy family up here. Um, this is, I'll let them introduce themselves and tell about them, but uh, you all are heroes of the faith um, because you, Thank you. Um, um, because you come and serve the Lord. And we're so thankful that you're here to be with us here today. You know, we, uh, we may speak uh, different languages, uh, live in different places, um, have a different skin color. But we're all one in Christ Jesus. And we say welcome to our church, the church of Jesus Christ. We're all one. I ask you to uh, encourage and share with us today. Buenos días a todos. Dios bendiga la vida de todos los que están aquí. Nosotros somos los privilegiados al estar con, con ustedes. Este, estoy de acuerdo con todo lo que dijo Drew. Porque nos une un mismo espíritu. Porque todos formamos parte del cuerpo de Cristo. Pero nunca nos habían aplaudido tanto. Se les agradece. Ok, voy a presentar a mi familia. Le di los nombres a Marina para que pudiera deletrearlos. Mi esposa se pronuncia Hendrika. Cristóbal. Derice. Y mi, y mi nombre es Froilán. Porque estamos invitados para dar testimonio de lo que Cristo ha hecho en nuestra familia. Aunque todos tenemos una historia personal, queremos compartirla como una familia. Ese es nuestro primer viaje misionero. Yo he viajado en otras ocasiones, pero ha sido solo. Y para mí ha sido una experiencia muy bella contar con mi familia. Yo les dije que íbamos a conocer al presidente Obama para que pudieran venir. Y espero que venga. Eh, yo soy el ginecólogo y en obstetra. Ok. Um, y yo pensaba cuando estaba estudiando studying, que quería hacer eh, lo mejor donde yo estuviera y estudié y estudié y estudié so studied and studied and studied. 
y cada vez quería estudiar más. Quería tener un gran currículum. Pero era algo muy carnal, era algo mucho de orgullo. But it was something that it was more to my flesh, that it was something that was boasting my ego. Probablemente por todo lo que influye en la niñez de uno. Uh, probably because everything that influences in the lines within my life. Pero desde que yo soy niño. But since I was a child. Soy niño, exacto. Este, siempre estuvo Dios en mi corazón. God was always in my heart. Yo sentía la providencia de Dios en mi vida. I would feel his, his presence in my life. Y a pesar de que era un pecador, And even though I was a sinner, Dios me guardó God kept me siempre. Always. Y siempre me cumplió todos mis deseos. And he would always give me what I asked for. En el momento en el que él deseó. In the moment that he wanted me to do. Y por eso muchas cosas se me dieron tarde. And that's why a lot of things aunque mi esposa es mucho más joven que yo. Very, very yo fui papá a los 40 años. I was a dad at 40 years old. Aunque parente 30. Even though I look like 30. <laughs> Pero Dios But cumplió God, sus promesas. God sent his promises. Entonces yo entendí <coughs> then I understood que el amor de Dios era muy grande para mí. That God's love was, was big. Y que todo el tiempo que tardó en que las cosas sucedieran. And that all that time that I was waiting for him to give me what he wanted. Era para entender que yo tenía que depender de él. There were for me to understand that I needed to depend on him. Por la gracia de Dios. By his grace. Dios vino a nuestra vida. He came into our life. En una, en una forma tierna y amorosa. In a very kind and loving way. Sin sufrimiento. Without suffering. Era la mejor etapa de nuestra vida. It was the best time in our life. Yo tenía mi esposa, mis hijos. I had my wife and my kids. Aún mi mamá vivía. My mom was still alive. Y leyendo la Biblia. And reading the Bible. Dios se manifestó a nuestra vida. God manifested himself in our life. Entonces todas las cosas empezaron a cambiar. And everything started to change. Empecé yo entonces a poner a Dios en el primer lugar. Then I started to put God in his first place. Y todo aquello que yo pensaba que era lo correcto right, pasó al último lugar. Ahora queremos servir al Señor. Today, y siento que lo estamos haciendo. Like y el mensaje es este. No, no es lo más importante el testimonio de nuestra vida. Sino que Cristo es el centro de nuestra vida. But that Jesus is the center in our life. Porque la vida cristocéntrica. Because uh, a Christian centrical life. Uh, da sentido. Makes sense. Da paz. Gives you peace. Da esperanza. Gives you hope. Y provoca en nosotros. And makes within us. El deseo de amar. Want to love each other. Okay. El deseo de servir al Señor. The desire to serve God. Y hacemos las cosas como en este tiempo misionero. And we do things like in this missionary time. Por amor a Dios. Because we love God. Más que el amor a las almas perdidas. More than those that are lost in the world. Más que el amor a, a recibir el gozo de predicar el evangelio. More than going out and preaching the gospel. El motivo fundamental. The fundamental of es que amamos a Dios. Is that we love God. Y obedecemos su palabra. And we obey his word. Yo les agradezco. I thank each and every one of you. Todo lo que los, su pueblo hace por el nuestro. Everything that your country does for ours. Porque van a, a Mexicali, a la ciudad donde vivimos. Because you all go to Mexicali where we live. Y también gastan su tiempo, su esfuerzo, su dinero. And you're also wasting your time and your money and Um, your vacation sometimes por amor a nosotros for our for love of us for for loving us y nosotros es, estamos muy agradecidos y somos muy bendecidos por ustedes and we're very thankful and very blessed by you guys ahora les agradezco que nos reciban aquí en Tennessee 
And I thank you for receiving us here in Tennessee. Es un estado muy bonito. It's a very, a very beautiful state. Es una gente muy bonita. The people are very kind. Y yo les prometo. And I promise. Que si aprendo inglés el año que entra. That if I learn English next year. Voy a tener el acento de Tennessee. <laughs> I'll have a Tennessean accent. <laughs> Voy a dar tiempo a mi familia. He's going to give time to his family. Thank you very much. A mi hijo, his son, tuve que decirle he told him que iba a estar Sabrina Carpenter. That Sabrina Carpenter was here. <laughs> Me llamo Cristóbal Méndez. I'm Cristóbal. Y Dios es algo muy importante en mi vida. And God has made something very special in his life. Porque yo hace como Tres años apenas entendí muy bien lo que lo que significaba es confiar en Dios. He says that about three years ago was barely the first time that he actually understood and could comprehend everything that God had made in his life. Leemos la Biblia todos los días. We read our Bibles every day. Y bueno nosotros mi hermana y yo terminamos la Biblia pero o sea, pero no nos no nos no la sabemos muy bien. He says that him and his sister has, have read the entire Bible, but they don't know it that well. Si leemos Proverbios y Salmos todos los días. They read Proverbs and Psalms every day. Y, y si hemos sentido que Dios nos ha bendecido, y Dios nos ha bendecido. And he says that he feels that God has blessed our family. Siempre le pido al Señor cuando lo necesito, y siempre me cumple las peticiones que le hago. He says that when he's in a time of need, he's always asking God, and God, God provides what he needs. Dios is completamente en mi vida porque a él lo quiero poner en primer a él lo quiero poner en primer lugar. He says that. Ser un buen and be a, a good Christian. Pues no y lo que and he, he says he doesn't want to fail God. En él. Keep trusting him. Y que no me parte de sus caminos. And he's praying that he doesn't stray from his from, from his road. Hola a todos. Hello everybody. Estamos muy contentos de estar aquí con ustedes. We're very happy to be here today. Son gente muy especial. Nos hemos sentido muy contentos, muy queridos, muy atendidos. You guys are very special to us. Um, we felt very loved and very well um, taken care of. Y las gracias son muy pocas para de veras manifestarles lo contentos que estamos. Eh. And saying thank you is not enough to um, express how we are feeling. De, de, de cómo nos han acogido aquí. And how you guys have embraced us here. Gracias por todo. Thank you for everything. Dios los bendiga. God bless you. Y sí, como decía mi esposo, el Señor llegó a nuestras vidas en un momento muy especial. And like my husband was saying, God did come into our lives in a very special time. Donde estábamos muy estables y muy contentos y Where we were todo. very stable and very happy. Y, y realmente abrimos nuestro corazón a Él. And we just opened our hearts to Him. Yo tuve una vida desde niña religiosa, por así decirlo. As I, uh, as I was growing up as a child, I had a very religious life. Mm, yo siempre confiando en Dios, pero a mi modo y haciendo mi voluntad. Always trusting in God, but doing it in my way. Y sabía que Él me cuidaba. And I knew that He was with me and that He was taking care of me. 
Pero ahora realmente entiendo su fidelidad. But now I understand his loyalty to us. Y es, es muy grande y, y muy profunda. Y, and it's huge and it's very deep. Y me hubiera gustado haberlo experimentado antes eh, en mi vida de muy joven para no haber cometido tantos errores. And I wish I would have known him when I was younger so that I wouldn't have made so many errors in my life. Pero pues era su propósito y, y ahora que tengo a mis hijos, pues estamos en los caminos de Dios. But it was his purpose and now that I have my kids, Um, and we are in God's way, in God's path. Y por eso los estamos instruyendo siempre con proverbios, salmos. And that's why we're always instructing our children with psalms and proverbs. Y la lectura de la Biblia. And reading the Bible. Y la doctrina correcta. And the correct doctrine. Siempre estamos tras la doctrina correcta y sana. Um, we're always trying to emphasize that. Porque eso es lo que yo no tuve de niña, that's not that I ni de muy joven. And when I was a young kid. Y doy gracias a Dios por la, el Señor Jesús por la salvación. I, I and I thank Jesus for my mm, yo no entendía muchas cosas en, en otro tiempo. I have many in time. Hasta que me topé con la palabra arrepentimiento. So with the word, I came to repentance. Y todo lo que eso significa. And everything that that involves. Um, entendí que Dios, el Señor no habita en corazones que no son puros. En corazones que no son puros. Que Dios, que Dios no habita, no vive. Um, God doesn't live within hearts that are not pure. Y pues llegó en un momento, como les digo, muy especial muy bonito y a pesar de los sufrimientos con los que me topé en la vida y le reclamé a Dios por por lo que me sucedía. And even though he came at a time where I wasn't suffering when everything was going well, I still came up to God and I told him, you know, and I and I wanted answers to why I had gone through what I did when I was younger. Pero ahora leyendo su palabra, conociéndole y en oración, entiendo lo que es su voluntad, entiendo lo que es su soberanía. And now, by, by knowing his Bible and by reading his Bible, I understand what it means, um, you know, his time, his will. Y eso me ha dado una seguridad y una confianza y ha incrementado mi fe. And that has given me the security and the strength that has fed my faith. Y, y les puedo decir que, que toda mi esperanza, mi vida está en él. And I can tell you that all my hope and Um, my praise is for him. Y, y tengo la necesidad siempre de orar por mi familia para que también sea salva. And I have a very strong, um, heavy heart for my families. I'm always praying for them so that they also can come to the uh, feet of Jesus. No esta familia. Not mi, this family, but, familia. you know, her mom, her dad, and her family. Y yo estoy muy confiada en Dios siempre en oración. And I, um, I'm always in prayer. Y, y la paz que tengo es lo que nunca había sentido antes. And the peace that I vida. have within me is something that I had never felt before. Y entendí también que esta vida es pasajera. And I understood also that this life is just temporary. Y que tenemos la vida en, eterna en Cristo Jesús. And we have eternal life in Jesus Christ. Y esto también le ha dado otro enfoque a, a mi vida. A mi manera de pensar. And that has also helped me to change the way that I focus in my life and the way that I think. Y de vivir. And how I live. Y les quiero comentar cómo fue que fuimos conociendo sobre la palabra, sobre el Señor. And I wanted to um, just give you a little brief um, details on how it was that we became to know Jesus Christ. Si empezamos a leer la Biblia, mi esposo y yo. They started, her husband and her started reading the Bible one day. Pero empezábamos a escuchar un programa de, de un predicador. And we started listening to the radio station and there was always this one preacher that they used to listen to. Su nombre es Adrian Rogers, creo que es de Tennessee. His name's Adrian Rogers. He's from here in Tennessee. Él él falleció en 2004. He passed away in 2004. 
pero nosotros oíamos sus programas grabados en, en la radio. En But we had his services um, recorded. Eso fue en 2007. And that was 2007. Y nos encantaba escucharlo y siempre hacía la confesión de fe al final de su programa. And we would love listening to him and he would always do the a confession of faith at the end of the program. Y mi esposo y yo nos subíamos al carro y escuchábamos el programa porque era una estación que nada más escuchaba en el carro. And she says that her and her husband would have to go into their car to listen to the radio station because it wouldn't work inside the house so they would be in their car listening to the radio. Y, y, y cada vez que hacíamos la, confes la confesión, la hacíamos cada vez que terminaba el programa y al día siguiente y al día siguiente. Y And she says that uh, at the end of each service uh, or the, the radio section, Um, they would always do the, the prayer of confession of faith every day. Porque entonces no sabíamos que la salvación se confesaba de una vez y era para siempre. Because we didn't know that confession was just one time and it was forever. Porque como les digo, no teníamos la doctrina sana, pero lo hicimos mil veces, entonces yo sé que estoy más que salvada, más allá que salvada. <laughs> She says that. Um, because they didn't have that doctrine, because they didn't know what was going on, and they didn't know about Jesus Christ, they would make it every day. She goes, so now I know that I'm saved. I'm super saved. Y bueno, sí, ya entendimos que la salvación no se pierde. Now we know and we understand that you can't lose your salvation. Y que el, que el Señor es maravilloso. And that God is great. Y... Muchas gracias. And thank you very much. God bless you, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Dios les bendiga. Hola, mi nombre es Erice. Hello, my name is Therese. Y yo, pues, entendí bien lo de Dios, pues, cuando tenía, pues, hace unos meses, algo así. Um, she says that she understood about God and, and she really comprehended what God was just a few months ago. God is very important to me. Pues, estoy feliz que también mi familia confía en Dios. And I'm very happy that all my family um, relies on God. Y, que si queremos tener vida eterna, tenemos que confiar en Él. And if we want to have eternal life, we need to trust in Him. Thank you. <laughs> Gracias. <laughs> I want to say thank you to them for coming and sharing with us. This crowd is not an easy one to speak to. <laughs> you have truly blessed us today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Hermano Pablo, well, good morning. Well, I've never seen so many angels in one place. <laughs> my name is Paul Chinori, and uh, just wanted to share my testimony about how uh, great our God is. Sometimes we seem to uh, veer off a uh, different direction. But God is always there to bring us back. You know, in uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 8, verse 23, just the heading of the Bible, it says, Jesus comes to storms. I don't know what, what kind of storms you've been in, rain storms, snow storms, wind storms, 
But what I wanted to share with you guys this morning is the storms of our lives. The storms of our lives. The storms that I've been through are very uh, difficult storms. I was abused as a child. By the time I was 11 years old, I turned to drugs and alcohol. That was the only way that I could cope with my pain and my hurt. By the time I was 15, I dropped out of school and continued my life and my path of drug addiction. When I turned 18, the same day I turned 18, I ended up in county jail. And I also brought with me to my adulthood, I also brought my addiction, my pain, my hurt, and my loneliness. For the next nine years of my life, that's all I knew. Drug addiction, crime, been a heroin addict, I've been a meth addict, a coke addict, 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 addict. You name it, I've tried it. And then in 1997, I was arrested for the last time. I was arrested for a couple, uh, several convictions of transportation, transportation for sales under the influence. And I was going to court. And uh, the judge told me, you know what, your, uh, your record caught up to you. He said, you're going to prison for 10 years. Like, wow, you know, I never, I've been in county, I never touched prison. And that scared me. Now, I remember getting transported back to county jail. Those that have been arrested get uh, shackled up. They shackle your feet, and they shackle your arms, and they chain to your waist. And I was getting transported back to county jail. And at every stop sign, I know it was God, at every stop sign, there was a, a car next that would stop next to us, and I would look out the window, and there was an elderly couple. And they were as happy as they could be. And I, you know, I looked out the window, and I said, no, that's what I want. That's what I've been longing for. And at the last stop sign, they stopped. They pulled ahead of us. And uh, I looked at the bumper. And it had a sticker. That sticker said, try God. Try God. I remember I got back into a, they, took, they got me in back in my cell. And uh that kept in my mind, try God, try God. I got on my knees, and I said, well, I've tried everything else in the world. Might as well try this God thing and see what happens. I got on my knees, and I cried out to God. I said, God, I don't know you. I don't even know if you exist. But if you do, get me out of, out of this jail cell. And I'll follow you for the rest of my life. See, when we're in trouble, we have the tendency to cry out to God. The next day when I went to sentencing on my court date, the judge looks at me and goes, I don't know what happened. But instead of going to prison for 10, uh, for 10 years, I'm going to send you to a men's rehab, a Christian men's rehab, rehab center for 16 months. For 16 months. I know God had answered my prayer. I did my 16 months, and I came out of uh, the men's home at uh, Turning Point Min uh, Ministry Institute. 
ministry in Hopeville, California. Now, I came out in 1998. At the end of uh, 1998, things started happening. I was on fire for the Lord. Just hungry for his word. At the end of 98, uh, I lost my brother to a car accident. They found him 100 feet out in the, out in the field. In February of 1999, my 15-year-old nephew was shot in the back of the head. In June of that year, I lose my father to cancer. But the biggest hardship that we had to go struggle is a few months later, my son, 81, 81 days old, died in my arms. He died in her arms. But you know what? I can stand here and testify that today I can thank God for taking our son home. As harsh as it sounds, I can thank God today. Because my wife, my girlfriend at the time, she was a, a drug addict, alcoholic. instantly went through a transformation. She got saved. She hasn't touched drugs or alcohol since then. As a matter of fact, there's nothing impossible for, for God. He transformed my drug addict and an al alcoholic to a preschool teacher. She's, our pre she's one of the preschool teachers at Pastor Moore's church. They have a, a preschool. It's called Noah's Ark. And that's what she teaches. See, that's the transformation of the power of God. After that, uh, after we, have, we lost our son, they uh, told my wife that she was never going to have a child. That's how she started going to a preschool and, and teaching and going to school. Because she could hold them little children. In 2005, we came to a conference here in uh, Tennessee, a uh, Living Free Conference with Pastor Moore. And uh, they laid hands on my wife. They called her out, Pastor called her out, and they laid hands on her. And they prayed for her. And this is the power of God. A year later, she gets pregnant. We have a, a beautiful baby girl. She's nine years old. Her name is Kaya, which means a little wisdom child. But see, through all that, I had a good job. All my, my bills were being take, taken care of. After God had given us that miracle of having our child, I went out to a party and had one beer. And I thought I could handle it. And I ended up losing everything. I walked out of my wife. I walked out of my children. I walked out of my church. I thought I was happy. I ended up in an abandoned trailer. No water, no electricity, no sewer. With a mess pipe in my mouth and a needle in my arm. Two thousand and eleven, my wife was still teaching. She told me, "You got to get out of the house." So I left my daughter in uh, 
and my wife crying at the front door, the screen door. I got, grabbed my bag, and I left. It was a struggle. See, it was a spiritual battle that I was fighting, going back and forth, thinking I was happy in my addiction. At the end of uh, 2011, she told me, I can't do this no more. You either get help or you're going to end up dead. Not just that, she goes, if you don't get the help that you need, she goes, I'm going to divorce you. And that really scared me. I didn't want to. I remember going to Pastor Moore and asking, praying, asking Pastor Moore, uh, pray for me. He goes, well, what? He goes, I want my family back. And I remember clear as day, Pastor Moore would tell me, you know what, Paul? I can't give you your wife back. I can't give you your family got back. He goes, you need to pray for God. God's the only one that can give you your family back. I ended up uh, seeking help. I went into a Teen Challenge in San Diego, California. And for the next three years, I was in the program. I went from one place to the next. When I finished my program, I said, now, God, now what? And he spoke to my heart as clear as day. He goes, remember? when you said you would follow me for the rest of your life? And that hit me like a ton of bricks. So I ended up going to a Teen Challenge Ministry Institute in uh, LA. It's a Bible college. I finished my Bible college in uh, 2013 when I graduated. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know if I still had a family, a church. But when I graduated, 2013, God restored my relationship with my wife. He restored the relationship with my children. He restored the relationship with my church. And today, I testify that under the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, I went back home. Today I stand here and I preach under the authority of God, under the authority of my pastor. I go out and I preach every other Sunday for a Trinity Baptist Church in Hoville. See, when we make a promise to God, we have to keep our promise. God makes promises in his word. He said that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And we need to believe them, promises that he has in our hearts, in our lives. No matter uh, what we do, how we do it, no matter how lonely you are, no matter what you think of yourself, you are loved. Jesus loves you. And I'm going to end this with an illustration. I asked Pastor Drew if I could uh, borrow a $20 bill. By the way, thank you, Pastor Drew. <laughs> but it's a little illustration that I've learned. And it stuck with me for the longest time. See, I just have a Simple $20 bill. If I was give it to you as a gift, free of a charge, how many of you would want it? I know out there there's a couple of you would want it, right? If I just went up to you and I said, here's $20, you want them, would you take them? You would. I know I would. See if I get this $20 bill. And I crumbled it in my hand. And I asked you, 
do you still want this $20 bill? You would want it, right? It's $20 bill. If I get this $20 bill and I throw it on the ground, do not, by the way, do not do this at home. $20 bill and I step on it and I stomp on it. Would you still want this $20 bill? You would, right? And I asked the question, why? Now, I'm going to answer that question for you. Do you want this $20 bill? Because this $20 bill doesn't lose its value. Do you hear that? It doesn't lose its value. No matter what I do to this $20 bill, I step on it, I crunch it, I throw it, I get it wet, whatever I do to it, it's still $20. That's the way our lives is with the Lord Jesus Christ. No matter what we go through, no matter how many times we fall, Jesus Christ is right there to pick us up. And we can dust our front off, but no, we, we know that we got Jesus that will dust our back off. And he'll give us that push to go back where we were. See, it doesn't matter how many times we fall. What matters is how many times we get up when we fall. We can stay down on the ground. See, that's what the enemy wants. He wants us to stay down, and I got you because you're down. But when you stand up, you stand up for God, that's when we're going to go through trials and tribulations in our lives. That's when we got to fight. We got to fight with everything we have. We stand the strongest and the tallest when we're on our knees. The tallest and the strongest when we're on our knees because we're crying out to God. I just thank you for giving us the opportunity to be here. You know, we just, we just came down from around the corner, you know, 2,000 miles, 2,000 miles or so, but, you know, we, uh, we got here. It's my first mission trip also, and... Uh, I promise you guys that you'll be seeing more of me. Amen? Thank you, and God bless you. say thank you to you guys for sharing with us today and um, showing your heart. You know, there's a, uh, a genuineness and an honesty about their lives that they have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And in both of their stories, God worked unusual circumstances to bring about uh, God working in their life. You think about a man who died in 2004, but yet his message three years later after his death is still resonated in the life of their salvation. You think about God working through a simple bumper sticker on a car to, to bring about uh, the restoration, the redemption of our brother Paul. They have a relationship with Jesus which is deep and intimate and, and so uh, um, profound that it's hard to understand at times. I heard Brother Paul last night, we were at the Hispanic church and uh, it came a big rain. I know you guys lived through that last night and they're under this little tent that's like the size of this podium right here. And there's like 30 people underneath it. And they're sharing grills with us. And it's raining and, and it's lightning and crazy stuff's happening. And I can see this passion and the intensity of, of his life as he, as he taught and poured out. And, and these people just ate up what he had to say. Why? Because there's an there's a understanding that he has a relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's something that's odd and different and, and unique. And people are, are longing. It's a, it's a mystery to a lot of people. Wanting to see what this is. 
I want to share just real quickly with you this morning. There's a man in the, in the Old Testament. Uh, the Bible says, God himself says about David, King David, that he was a man who sought after his own heart. God himself said that. It wasn't a, a something that we say or think about David. God says, this man is after my own heart. And we see the, the effects of that as, 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 as David writes many of the Psalms and he has this uh, unique ability to speak to God and he has this unique understanding of who God is. And, and at times in the Psalms, he's very intense and he's passionate and saying, God, I, I, I love you. I, I, I can't be with you. I won't, can't wait to be with you. And the other time, he's, he's complaining to God saying, God, where are you? You're not in my life. And I think that reflects the, the essence of a deep relationship with, with someone. Even on this earth, we, we, we typically when you go to Weigel's or you you go somewhere else and you have a problem with somebody, you don't just lay out your heart right there at, you know, pumping gas. Well, how's your day? Well, can I tell you about my day? I've, my heart's broken today. You don't do that, right? We don't come to that place. But, but the more you grow in intimacy with someone, the more you, typically the problems that you have and you share and the, and the depths of your heart comes out. And, and David is one of those guys and he comes to this place where he is in love with Jesus. He's in love with God. He, he's in love with who he is. He's in love with his, his character and his heart. And, and he says all kinds of stuff in the Psalms. But David was also a man who messed up big time. So blatantly sinful, so blatantly uh, 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 murderous, so blatantly uh, an adulterer in his life. He, he, he does his mistakes, he lives his life, but God still calls him a man after his own heart. Why? What defines David? Not his sin. What defines David is his pursuit of God. It's his pursuit of knowing God, his pursuit of, of following after God and, and wanting to know him, wanting to know the depths of who God is. And the flip side of that is God wants to save for your life. He wants to know you. He wants to, to follow after you. He wants to chase you. My uh, good friend, uh, Tyler Brown, is sitting on the front row right here in six days from today, which if you haven't talked to him today, he'll tell you by the end of the service. He's getting married in six days. He tells everyone. Um, it's 1,700 days. and it's, Every day you get an update of what's, what's coming up. And, and uh, if you've ever been around Tyler, you'll know that he's kind of in love with his, his fiancée, soon-to-be wife. And a few weeks ago, we were in staff meeting. And we're sitting there, and we're discussing, you know, big stuff about the church, life-changing stuff, having prayer, doing all this stuff, thinking about what God may be doing next. And, and Tyler and I are in a conversation, just he and I. I don't know where the rest of them were, but he and I were in this direct conversation. He's sitting right across the table from him. And I hear his phone. It vibrates on the table. And so he picks it up, and immediately his face changes from, like, I'm in, like, church stuff talking about this, to he gets this, like, dumb grin on his face. Like, he is done, dude. He is, he is stuck in this phone, and he's right here. And so I sense this, like, what's happening to him at this moment. And I continue to talk to him. And what I find out, I can see a little bit of his phone. Abby Walker texts him. He is, he is done, dude. It's his fiance. And so I begin to have this conversation with him. And everybody's sensing this now. They're like watching and they're having fun with this. I'm talking to him and he doesn't even acknowledge that I'm there. He's done. He's out. He might as well just go home for the day. Why? Because he's pursuing his wife. That was the most important thing at that moment of his life. And at this moment in his life is his future wife, his fiance. And that's the place that God wants us to come to is that we have that kind of pursuit that when God calls, when, when the text comes, when, when he speaks, that we drop everything and he's right there. We have that kind of relationship, that kind of desire, that kind of pursuit of him. And oftentimes what happens in our church is there is a disconnect from the information and the knowledge that you get on Sundays to what translates in their life. There's a gap between, between the, the information and the understanding of Scripture, though it is, it's awesome, it's great, it's life-giving. The problem is that a lot of people don't take what they, what they get from it and actually experience it themselves and encounter it themselves. Paul was a man who had heard about Jesus, most likely grew up around him, knew all the stories, did all the stuff, but there wasn't a change in Paul's life until he got knocked off his horse. He had an encounter and experience with Jesus Christ one day. It changed who he was. It changed how he thought. It changed what he did in life. It changed where he went in life. There was a, 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 an awareness inside of him before of Jesus Christ, but Jesus Christ showed up in his life, and then he experienced it, and everything changed. Everything shifted. He began to seek the Lord Jesus. You know, there's a, a, a different levels of relationships in our life from an awareness to, to deep intimacy with people, to deep uh, encounters with people. And we have different people at different levels of our life. We, we let in with different secrets. And, and there's a place of intimacy that, that Paul got to. There's a place of intimacy that, that David got to. And, and uh, God wants the same for us. 
This morning I got uh, just a, a real quick um, story for you. Or uh, this is more than a story. This is life right here, right? There. Like this is a lifestyle. If you grew up in the church, you know you know several things. When you came to Sunday school, you were going to get Jesus Christ. You were going to pray, and most likely you were going to get donuts, and your life was set. Right? When you're eight years old, dude, this is it. Growing up in church, you didn't have donuts. It wasn't a good day. You go home, tell your mom that today was terrible at church. Why? Because we didn't have donuts. So donuts will change your life, especially these things that start with a K, Krispy Kreme. Let me give you some real quick facts about about Krispy Kreme. By the way, um, these are uh, new laws that are coming up. They're thinking about labeling these as actually crack because they're so addictive. And so uh, if you're, you know, if you, if you like these things, be careful of that because there's new laws coming up. Uh, this was founded in 1937, uh, 1937 Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Check this out. The original recipe, uh, which is where we get the cream from, it was made of fluffed egg whites, uh, sugar, shortening, skim milk that was chilled and mixed with flour and then fried in a covered glaze. And here's you uh, uh, something special there. They actually put uh, mashed potatoes in these things. So when you're eating next time, you can get in a little bit of uh, a serving of uh, vegetables here. So feel good about yourself. Um, here's the problem, though, is in each one of these, there's over 200 calories. There's 22 grams of carbs and there's 12 grams of fat. And it would take you an average of 30 minutes of exercise to wear off one of these bad boys once you ingest it. So uh, I don't know if that helps or hurts this morning, but I'm looking at them, and they're, oh gosh, they're awesome looking. I don't know, let me share this with you. I mean, Holy Spirit is in this place right now, right? Here he is. Look at these donuts. So check this out. Their, their mission or their vision is this, to be the worldwide leader in sharing delicious tastes and creating joyful memories. There's over 44 varieties of Krispy Kremes. Uh, some of them are just special editions, but this is like the king right here. This is the king of donuts. There's nothing else that beats a Krispy Kreme. Now, the, the executives over in Winston-Salem this morning who are sitting back and, and counting their money and doing whatever they do, um, here's, here's the reality for them. They don't really care that you know facts about Krispy Kreme. They don't care that you have knowledge of Krispy Kreme. They don't care that you know that it was founded in 1937 or how many varieties there are. They don't care about that stuff. You know what they care about? <laughs> that you experience it. It's going to be a minute. <laughs> a little bit of revival going on in my mouth. I can't wait to see you later. <laughs> There's a difference in knowing about Krispy Kreme and tasting Krispy Kreme. There's a difference in knowing there's 44 varieties and there's another, there's a total different place when you put 44 in your mouth at the same time, right? And the Lord is the same way. He says, I give you my word and it's great, but it's a tool so that you can come to know me, so that you can experience me, have an encounter with me that will forever change your life. This is what David says. This is what the psalmist says. One thing that I have asked from the Lord that I shall seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all my days, that I might experience your presence. J.T., come on up, man, come on up. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to meditate in this temple. When, he, when he's saying this of the Lord, when you said to me, Seek my face. My heart within me said to you, Your face, O Lord, I shall seek. I would have despaired unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord. Only a man who's experienced, who has tasted and seen that the Lord is good can actually say those words. Only a man who's been there, that place, that has that kind of relationship can say to the Lord, God, I would have despaired of my life had I not experienced you, had you not come in, had I not been seeking after you. So I want to give you something real quick. This is my challenge. This is your challenge for the day. It's a six-day challenge. It's only for six days. And what I'm asking you to do is to commit to this. One day for, the, for every day for the next six days, set aside a time to seek the Lord. Now I know for some of you that may be, it may be different. It may be weird. It may be unique. There may, uh, you may not know how to do that. You may think, well, I'm, I'm new to this. I'm not real sure of where I should go or what I should do. Some of you may have been longtime veterans in this thing and got this thing all figured out, and, and this is kind of easy for you, but for this is the first part of this challenge. You would set aside some time for the next six days every day to seek the Lord. And for some of you who may not do it, I'm asking for five minutes. 
We say, oh, it's just five minutes. You can't get much out. Well, it's five minutes than you were doing before, right? And so we're asking you at some point for the next six days, once a day, to seek after the Lord. I'm going to ask you to do this, to start with the Word. Start with the Word of God. This is the, the medium. This is the way into which we encounter Jesus Christ. It's not meant for information alone, but for transformation through knowing Him intimately and passionately pursuing Him. If you go on the app today, you will find uh, six verses for the next six days, one a day on there that will help you in this journey, all found in the, in the book of Romans chapter 8. So I'm going to ask you to do this, to read Romans chapter 8, and tomorrow your first verse that I'm going to ask you to look at is Romans 8.1. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. After you read that and think about it, I want you to marinate in that. Like it's a big piece of juicy steak sitting there and it's got juices run out of it. May that be your life that day for the next 24 hours until you wake up the next day and you do it again or whenever you choose to do that. That you would soak in that. That you would take that in. You would, you would, you would think about it. You would contemplate it. You would you consider your own salvation and how now because of Jesus Christ's death on the cross, there's no condemnation. I stand free. I stand complete. I stand who I am as a, as, as, as a believer in Jesus Christ and seeking after Him, regardless of my past, regardless of my sin. I know He has set me free, and I am chasing after Him. And last thing I'm going to ask you to do this. Share, spread it. Text it, tweet it, talk to your husband, talk to your wife about, about what it is. Now, here's the deal. For some of you who may have, have never gone down this journey before, when you begin this, you may sound like a caveman when you talk. You may begin to pray, and it sounds like this. Dear God, I don't know what I'm doing, but I ask you to help me. I don't know. It may be it, God. Reveal yourself to me. Maybe talking with your husband or wife, that's a weird thing for you. And you've never done that before. But, man, you've got to start somewhere. Start small. Start easy and begin right there. Romans 8, 1 tomorrow, and you'll get the rest of the verses throughout that. Share or spread it. Tell someone what's going on. Tell somebody where you are in life. Here's another psalm. I want to finish up with this. And the Bible says, As the deer pants for the water brooks, so my soul thirsts for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Here this morning, there may be some of you who've never had an encounter with Jesus Christ. You may have heard about Him. You may have known all the stories. You may have, have, have seen all this stuff. You may have been around church your whole life, but you've never moved from the place of, of information and moved to the place of transformation, actually seeking after the Lord. For some of you, it may have been a, it's been a long time since you've gotten on your face and said, God, reveal yourself to me. I want to know you. I want to follow after you. I want to know you deeply in intimacy. I want to pursue you like, a, like a, a man who's in love with his wife or a husband who's in love with his children who, who seek after them. God, I want to know you. I want to follow you. I don't want to thirst for you. I want to hunger for you. I want my mouth to water for you like it's doing right now with those donuts. Like, God, I want to know you. What would it look like for your life that they would say about you that you walk with God? That you walk with Him. You intimately and passionately pursue Him. I promise you, for those of you who've never been in that place before, never sought after the Lord, if you would take this challenge, the next six days of your life will be the, 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 the change that brings about the difference in the rest of your life. Continue on. Go through the motions if you want to. Continue on and, and go through the life that you think is okay, but God wants something more than okay for you. He wants something that is incredible. And He says, I'm going to give you myself. When I say, seek my face, the, 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 David says within me, I sought your face, Lord. And right now, He's giving you an invitation. He's saying, seek my face. Seek me. I will be found by you when you come before me. Your head bowed and your eye closed this morning. I ask you this question. Do you know the Lord? I'm not saying that you pray some prayer, receive salvation, baptize, or, or you know, know Scripture, but do you know Him? Like, you could call Him like a friend right now, and you can just call Him up and say, Lord, I, I don't want to know you right now. God, I don't need something for, from you. God, I want to know you. Reveal yourself to me, God. If this is the pain and the hurts and struggles of my life. God, what's going on in your world today? What's going on with you? Well, how are you moving and working in, in other people's lives? How are you moving and working? Share with me, God. Reveal yourself to me. There's nothing more in this life that God wants 
He doesn't want your obedience. He doesn't want your service. He doesn't want your, 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 um, your giving. He doesn't want your going. What God most wants most of all that you love Him. You love Him. You seek Him. You follow Him. And today, He's inviting you to seek His face. Wherever you are, wherever you are in life, whatever you've gone through, wherever you sit in this seat, in this auditorium, if you're watching online right now, wherever you are, God, He is asking you to seek His face. So God, we ask you right now to move in this place. God, we want a genuine, humble, honest relationship before you. We know you. God, I say forgive us of of pursuing wrong passions and and wrong things in life. And I pray we turn our pursuits to you. We turn our eye to you. And we do not look to the left or right, God. We look directly to you. God, reveal yourself to us. God, we love you. We thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. I'm going to ask everyone to stand their feet. And if you need to seek the Lord, this altar is open. You need to grab someone to pray with you. Grab them. This altar is open. God wants to meet you. Let's sing. Let's worship. Let's respond. Oh, come.